So this is my SWT PC6800 uh, that I found on Facebook Marketplace um, a few weeks ago and um, I've been able to get it working. It's it's all working now. So I'm not going to make a repair video. I'm actually going to make a video about uh, building a new adapter board for this uh, because I want to see if I can make it speak. So one thing I was doing was looking on eBay for SWT PC um, boards. Um, I wanted to see what kind of boards were out there and for a long time there was only one there's not very much about these these computers online there was only one board and it was a sound board and what i found was that um uh for about i think it was 250 us dollars you could buy the sound board and uh, um this is a picture of it here and i remember looking at it thinking that looks so simple for a sound board and i kind of wondered how did it work I started googling around see if I could find the circuit diagram for it or something like that. And what I found was a GitHub repo, which was created by uh, Bob Applegate. Um, and I found his website and a whole bunch of cool things on his website. I bought one of the cards uh, um, that he's made that's, that's SWT PC compatible. This is a RAM and EEPROM uh, module. And this is cool because it will allow me I hope it will allow me to put a, um, a different ROM monitor into my machine without having to do um, actual modifications to the board. I'm going to see if I can do that. But anyway, Corsham uh, Technologies make a whole bunch of uh, products. One thing they don't make is this soundboard that I found on, um, um, on eBay. But what I did find was the schematics for a replica. And um, Bob Applegate said... Uh, in um, the GitHub uh, repo, um, but you didn't think there was many people who would be interested in it. So, um, but the board PCB layout is there, and you, um, I downloaded it um, from GitHub, loaded it into Eagle, and was able to order from PCB Way um, some circuit boards. So, circuit boards arrived, took a while, I had to pay import duty, and the minimum you can order is five. Um, so this is what the circuit board looks like. Uh, so I have a few of these, as you can see. They're actually quite nicely made. I bought the PCBs and um, I bought a whole bunch of parts from um, DigiKey. So I'm going to build up uh, the boards. So the finished board took about an hour to make, uh, so let's get on and uh, test it out. Um, this goes in slot four. Uh, like that. And you can see the uh, oscilloscope cables connected. I've actually plugged in my, uh, I don't know if you can see down there, this is the... Uh, the RAM board uh, that came from Corsham. Um, I, I don't. I can put my old memory boards back in as well. I'm just going to use this for a while just to see how how well it works. The sound board is now in the computer and it's in slot four. Um, and I've connected um, this oscilloscope to it. Um, this is a uh, picture of the um, the DAC part of the sound board and the oscilloscope is connected to this point up here which is basically the output of the resistor ladder. So this is an R2R resistor ladder. So you have basically 10K resistors going up here, and then each one of these resistors is a 20K. So that's where the R2R comes from. So, and each data line contributes um, um, a different amount to the output voltage. Um, so this is the basically the most significant bit if you consider it from an output voltage. So uh, in a five volt circuit, um, this line is going to output uh, five over two. So you should get 2.5 volts out of that line. Uh, this next one down should be half that. So uh, 1.25. This next one should be uh, 0.725 volts and so on. Uh, so basically it's a bit like... Um, uh, exactly how we store binary data in, in, in a byte in a computer. You have a, a most significant bit and a least significant bit. 
um, and the kind of resistor ladder does that for us. On this side, this is a latch. Basically, data comes in, it's clocked through, and then the output lines stay at um, uh, stay at this kind of signal levels that they, they were when the, the clock happened. So um, what I should be able to do is, um, I've got all this connected up, I should be able to uh, send uh, some values to the music board. Um, so I'm just gonna edit the memory at location 8010, which is the IO address of the card. And if I set it to FF, that's the highest voltage. So here you see voltage ju jumped up. Um, so it's at 4.96 volts. And if I set it to um, zero, zero, that should be the lowest voltage. Um, and you know, one thing that's interesting about this is that the, um, it's a six bit DAC, so it's not gonna use every data line. There's, it's an eight bit, uh, there's an eight bit um, data line. So six bits are wired up, but they're not wired up in the order that you would necessarily expect. Not from the most significant bit down to the least. Uh, the most significant bit on the, the output is actually connected to data line five, which is right in the middle, um, which is kind of strange. So let me show you what happens when um, I uh, activate that bit. So activating a bit is the same as there, so that should be half. So that's your 2.5 volts, so there you got 2.56. And then if I do the next line down, um, which is 40, uh, that should be half again. So there you have 1.36. Seems to be um, working pretty well. Um, although these lines are kind of connected it's uh, not intuitive to me why this is connected this way, where data line five is the most significant bit on the um, resistor ladder. Anyway, if anybody knows why this is wired up the way it is, um, let me know in the comments. So next step is going to be to output a, an audio signal so we can hear something. Uh, so, and we're gonna do a PWM signal because that's what this, um, that's what the music that was output on this board basically did, it's just PWM signals. So, um, so what I have is a workflow here. Uh, um, I actually have an assembler program that I can run. Um, so I can start, I, I've, I've written this program. This is my first 6800 assembler program. Um, and I, I looked at how, um, uh, how the software for these soundboards worked. I don't actually have a copy of uh, of it. I have the kind of uh, written on paper um, um, how they work, a theory of operation. And what they would do is they'd set a value and then they'd wait and then they'd do this complement the value, which so uh, sets one value, complements it. So all the bits that are set to one become zero, uh, waits uh, the same amount of time again, then goes back and forth. So you basically get a PWM signal from doing that. So how to get this into the computer? So um, I have an assembler program, so uh, uh, and this will output an S19 file, and then I can use TerraTerm to load it in. So I hit the L command. Uh, this means the machine's waiting to load an S19 file. Send a file. Uh, PWM. Here we go. And this one only takes a few seconds to load, uh, so much faster than typing it in. Um, and then I think uh, I just hit go. Let me just check what the program counter is pointing at. There we go, and hit go. So there I introduced the delay. I made the delay uh, equal to, uh, so that it would be middle C, so this is, 261.7262 hertz, which is middle C. So, soundboard's working. Ready. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is see, rather than just generating a PWM signal, can I generate a sine wave? Um, now, I don't think these music boards were ever um, used in this way. Um, they didn't output sine waves or anything like that. They just did PWM signals. The other problem is the um, 
the bits are connected in a strange way, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, what I have to do is figure out what value to send to uh, the soundboard or the music board uh, for what point in the sine wave. So I wrote a quick Python script, which I'll share. And then what I do is I output it to um, a line and I can actually, uh, this is a 64 stage sine wave. You could have more stages if you wanted to or less. Um, but what I can do with this is I can basically copy that into uh, my assembler program and see if I can get a sine wave. This is the uh, sine wave assembler, which again, I'll also uh, share on GitHub. Um, and essentially here's the 64 bit sound wave. I've also got a 32 bit one. Um, and um, there's no um, delays in this program. So what it does is it just, as fast as the machine can, it reads the uh, byte from memory and then writes it to the soundboard and then does, does this in a loop. Anyway, let's uh, load this one into um, 6800. So load, okay, and let's check program counter. Is it the right spot? And then hit go. So there you see a sine wave. So, and that's a pretty, pretty nice looking sine wave. Uh, you can actually see the steps. If you zoom in a bit further, you can see it's stepping, but it does look like a sine wave. And it sounds a little bit nicer than the PWM signal. Um, it's 642 hertz. Now the interesting thing is 642 hertz, um, 642 hertz times 64. This is the sample rate. What's interesting is the sample rate for this guy. Oh, can you see that? It's actually, it's, uh, the machine is able to push out 41 kilohertz, uh, in terms of sample rate. Um, the only problem is if you could actually output something that's sampled at that rate, you'd be out of memory within a second. So um, but that's pretty good. I might be able to actually make this uh, soundboard actually make audio. So let's see if we can make it speak. Okay, so um, this is the, the same um, uh, M68 audio DAC wave converter uh, um, notebook. Uh, so again, writing in Python. Uh, I have got a WAV file here and um, I found a Python library called SoundFile, which will actually load WAV files in. I found another Python library called SampleRate, which will allow me to downsample. So rather than having 48 or whatever kilohertz sample rate um, or, or, you know, uh, or more, um, um, what I actually want is something like eight kilohertz sample rate. That's the same sample rate that is used on telephones. So we should be able to hear audio or someone speaking. Um, so I down sample uh, it to eight kilohertz, and then I do exactly the same thing that I did with the sine wave, but I do it with the sound file. Uh, and this generates this time because it's a second and a half of audio. It generates a very long, uh, um, uh, a very long set of uh, WAV data, which I can then paste into my assembler program. Uh, here it is here. Uh, there's all of the WAV data, tons of it. And then this is just a short assembler program, um, which uh, this time it actually has a delay in it because it's only eight kilohertz sample rate. So I actually have to slow down the program uh, for it to output at the right frequency. Okay, so let's load that in and see how far we get. Okay, it's finished loading. That took close to 10 minutes to load, believe it or not. So um, let's run um, that. So um, there's a delay loop in the code that allows me to change the sample rate. So let's first just set the sample um, delay to be a little bit shorter. So let's do this. This should be relatively fast audio. Yep, pretty fast. So um, <clears throat> the right sample rate is about here. So let's see how this sounds.
Awesome. Thanks for watching. Please uh, leave a comment below if you want. Um, coming up in just a second is some extra bonus content, uh, which is what happens when my assembly language programming goes wrong. Enjoy. Check this out. So this is what happens when I do something wrong.